Hi everybody, and welcome back to Trick and Treat Part 4. So, as I've said in my previous if you haven't seen the other parts yet, go back, watch Part 3, 2, and 1. I don't want you guys missing out on how actually incredible this storyline really is. I'm, I'm really enjoying this, and... Uh, I guess we'll take it from there. This starts off by Ashley explaining something in a bad mood, and unfortunately, I don't remember what she had just said because I took a short break here before making this video. But we're going to move on. It seemed she didn't get along well with whoever that person or entity was. Oh, okay, so she was explaining how she's actually the good person that's in this dark, mysterious forest. Um, there is actually a bad spirit or witch in here. Wouldn't you be the one who collects souls for food? For fools? From fools? Wow. I asked without thinking. I seriously need more experience when dealing with a girl. I think you just need more experience dealing with people. If only I were more popular. That's not... Popularity is so overrated. Ashley stops suddenly. She then turns at me, showing me a furious face. You idiot. I already said I'm the good one. For a moment, I thought she was going to hit me on the head. You kind of deserve it, dude. But fortunately, she stops before doing so or biting me again. Okay, okay. I meekly responded as if I were a scolded child. But if you eat me, I will make sure to give you the worst indigestion in your life. Oh no. <clears throat> you idiot, I don't eat humans, replied Ashley, ending in a arrogant snort. Alright, so it's now 3.11 in the morning. Several minutes had passed since I started to walk hand in hand with Ashley. At the beginning, I did not trust her at all, but the more time passed, the easier it was to believe her. I hadn't noticed before how comforting her hand is, soft and pleasant to the touch. I blushed just thinking about it. Even if she is a witch, she's a girl too, right? Then I sigh. Come on, Axel. Composure. Composure. With every step, the curse of the forest seemed to weaken. The atmosphere was less oppressive every minute until finally I was able to forget about that unpleasant feeling. Before I noticed, the darkness had returned to normal, feeling only empty. The rotten smell had also disappeared without a trace. Now I, now I could really say I was in a common and ordinary forest, even boring. But I could not be more grateful for that. Just a little more to get out, so let's keep moving. Then I set my sight on the back of Ashley, watching her walk in silence. She was completely focused on that simple thing. If you're the witch from the legend, why are you helping me? I suddenly asked, not thinking twice before. I was really intrigued by that. Ashley stops and turns looking at me with an angry face. Idiot. Do you really think that all witches are evil? She was right. The general images of witches is not good, but it's not as if stereotypes were truthful. Then she closes her eyes, making an annoyed face. It's true that I had supernatural powers, but I never used them to do harm. Ashley lowers her sight and pauses. Suddenly she looks sad. My only sin was to be born in the time of the witch hunts. That's why I'm that's why I was condemned. That explains it well. I feel that I can trust she is good. Oh, that's music. But there is still one more question. And how did you end up becoming a cat? Ashley immediately blushes. She was so embarrassed that it was almost adorable. Almost. Well, before my execution, there was a cat watching in the distance. So I had to just transfer my soul to it. 
She explained, avoiding looking into my eyes. Of course, we now share the body we have like a deal. The cat will be happy as long as it has something to eat and a place to sleep. I try to provide her with all those needs. And in return, she lets me stay in her body. As she talks, she is blushing shyly. I see. I think it's a fair deal. I replied with a sincere smile. The truth is that I found it a little funny. It turns out that she is both a girl and a cat. That answers some questions. Ashley closes her eyes and nods a couple times. When she wants when she wants to, she can be very cute. Too bad that happens so <coughs> so rarely. <coughs> Excuse me. Not saying more, Ashley continues walking to the exit. This time I stay in silence, and that remains for me. All that remains for me is to escape from this place. Wow, there is something in my eye. It is now 3.15 a.m. Well, here we are. Ashley said just a few minutes after we walked. She isn't lying. I can see the end of the forest in the distance. I had to contain my desire to scream with joy at that moment. There must be two other humans close here, your friends. Go with them and return home. I hope that nobody else comes tonight. Ashley said, giving me a subtle farewell, but strangely, she does not let go of my hand. She looks deep into my eyes, amazed. I notice the gentleness that reflects them. Can you make a promise? She suddenly said with an honest voice, it was no joke. What is it? I asked full of curiosity. I don't know what I could do for a witch, but after helping me to escape, I think that she deserves me. She deserves me to hear her request. End this legend. She then murmured with an air of sadness. I can understand why she asked for something like this. I want you to help me to keep people away. The legend only attracts more people, as in your case. I need to kill it, replacing the supernatural danger with a human danger. A human danger? So you want to scare them with ordinary dangers as thieves or ferocious animals. On second thought, there is logic in what you asked. If you remove the element of magic and only leave the danger, then exploring the forest is not worth the risk. Ashley nods and then looks into my eyes blushing. Yes, exactly. She said pleased. Okay, I'll do it. You can rely on me. I responded with determination. I wanted her to know how serious I was. That, w that it was not a promise I would forget as soon as I got out of the forest. Thank you. Then she closes her eyes momentarily and inflates her chest with pride. You aren't as stupid as I thought. I should have expected something like that. Hey, I told you not to talk ill of someone when they're in front of you. I, I complained angrily. This cat, I mean this girl, simply will never change. After seeing my reaction, Ashley cannot help but laugh. I, I'm sorry. Ha ha. That's the first time I've ever seen her so happy. That made me blush. Ashley looked unexpectedly adorable at that moment. My heart was nervously beating as if I was with a normal girl. Suddenly, she stares at me and gets close. Her face is less than an inch from mine. Again, she demonstrates not knowing what personal space is. But this time, I don't know whether to be angry or thankful. Having her so close, a beautiful girl, makes me nervous. This is farewell. She suddenly said, she then brings her lips to my cheek and gives me a tender kiss. Everything becomes white at that moment. Everything loses its color. Everything is gone. Everything. Everything.
It's now 3.18 a.m. I'm outside of the forest. I have no idea of how I made it here, but there is no illusion. I am bewildered, as if I had been as if I had been sleepwalking. Axel, Axel. Suddenly, I hear someone calling my name, but it's not any strange voice. It's the voice of my friends who are looking for me. Hey, over here. I shout without a second hesitation, with a bit of clumsiness because of my confusion. Soon they found me and impatiently run towards me. Where were you? The worry was killing us. Stephen said with a face that I don't remember having ever seen before, before answering I rubbed my forehead. Within the forest I couldn't find the exit. Alfred was about to say something, but before that I interrupted him. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I was just lost. The important thing is is that we are all safe. Yeah, you're right. Hey, don't you feel that we are forgetting something? Alfred murmured at the same time he lowers his, pen his sight pensive. Suddenly a blurry image appears in my mind. So white and it was white and bright, but I can't remember more. However, that weak memory wakes a strange feeling of nostalgia in me. It was as if I had lost something, but what could it be? Anyway, we should go home. This has gone too far for a test of courage. I said with no intention of spending one more minute in this forest. They both agreed with me. With nothing else to say, we can only return home. By the way, guys, we should write on that page not to go to the forest. Forget about the witches. Somebody might get lost. Somebody might get lost there as if it hap as it happened to me. It was a miracle that I came out alive with that beast lurking around. Before knowing it, my lips moved. Why did I say that? I have no idea. But something inside inspired me to do so. To be honest, I have no memory of the beast I speak of. All I can remember is that it has red eyes and white fur, but nothing more. Then I remember something. I think it was a promise I made to... Wait, to whom had I made that promise? I think about it for a moment in silence, but in the end I can't remember a thing. No matter. All I know is that I got out and I'll never come back here again. And there you go. Guys, this was great. I absolutely love it. Um, I got this off Steam. It's free to play. And it, I, I love it. The only thing I'm kind of curious about is that the... Decisions that you make in the game, I don't know if they actually change the outcome of it. Like, what if I had not killed the cat who ended up becoming that girl? What if I had just killed her there? Would I aimlessly roam through the forest? Would the bad witch find me? So I'm kind of curious if saving the cat has this one witch expose herself to you and she is kind enough to show you the way out so I'm going to actually go back through this and see if I can get a different outcome for the end of this story so I'm gonna play back through this real quick and hurry up and get to that point Okay, and we're back guys. So we're at the point where we find the cat unconscious laying on the ground and last time I picked the cat up so this time I'm going to ignore it as much as my gut tells me not to. I already picked the other choice so I'm going to ignore the cat this time. It is best to continue without waking her. The cat is dangerous. It's her fault I ended up here in the first place and my friends are missing. I don't know what else the cat is capable of doing, so I decided it's better to leave it behind and continue walking. 2.37 a.m.
I soon lost to sight of the cat. Once more I find myself in the dark forest, walking aimlessly, only moving forward. But it didn't seem I was getting somewhere. Come here, you'll be safe. Alright, so there's that voice again. And we already know that this voice is bad. So, suddenly stop. It was probably easy to see the disbelief on my face at that moment. It's that voice again, I whispered to myself with no one to listen to me. Shortly after I got away from the cat, a mysterious voice appeared in my mind. It is a feminine voice, soft and gentle, but it is be but if it belonged to a as if it belonged to a princess from a fairy tale. But I can't trust it. Am I really going crazy? Uh, I already I already read all this. Uh, I don't know, but I don't like any of the two options. Don't be afraid. Come with me. I will help you. Every time the voice is heard more clearly, stronger, and more often, she seems to be leading me somewhere. It does not inspire me with confidence, but between the voice and staying here in this putrid forest that seems to have no end, I choose to follow it. See, and we already know that that's a bad thing. Shortly after, I arrived to a clearing in the forest. Okay, now we all read from the article, the clearing is bad. At last, I can see the night sky. The full moon shines elegantly, surrounded by a blanket of darkness and stars. A beautiful image, but there is something strange in it. How weird. Wasn't there a half moon tonight? I said to myself as I look at the moon and try to remember a vague memory in my mind. Anyway, it's not important. The moon will not come to save me. Ooh, that doesn't look good. I lower my sight. It was then that I noticed there was a cabin in the clearing. Is this Hansel and Gretel? It was hidden under the shade of the trees nearby, so I didn't see it before, I think. The cabin looks old and worn down, even depressing, but if I'm lucky, there may be someone there. Open the door. I'm waiting for you, my knight. That's already creepy! Suddenly, I hear the voice again. It was in, the ca it was in this cabin, no doubt. Somehow, her voice sounds different this time. It was an inexplicable kindness, even love. I feel as, as if I were a man returning home to see his wife. The spell has been put on him. After thinking about it for a moment, I can't help but laugh at myself. How silly. I must really be losing my mind. I said as a joke, hiding my anxiety with humor. In any case... There's nothing else for me than to open the door. However, I can't stop thinking that I'm forgetting something. His friends? My hand then slowly opens the door of the cabin. What awaits me there is something that leaves me perplexed. The bodies of the five missing people were hanging as if they were puppets. Oh God, with empty eyes, but all of them are facing me. Uh, and between them is a woman with a big smile. Okay, I'm out of time for this video, and I hate to stop it here right in, in the middle of this, but starting with the next video, we're going to see how this alternate ending goes. Or if this is the right ending. Who knows? I haven't really decided yet, but I like the first ending so far. Uh, yeah, alright, so I'm stopping it here. I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.